Okay, well, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Karen Barton, and I'm the training manager here at National MI. With that, I'd like to introduce our kickoff speaker for the webinar, and that's Tony Skoma. Tony, the floor is yours. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day. My name is Tony Skoma. I am the National MI account manager for California Bay Area and Central Valley. If you haven't had a chance, give, uh, give, give our Rate GPS uh, a, a try here. It's our risk-based pricing engine, and Rate GPS stands for Granular Pricing System. So look in, look, this looks at multiple factors when it relates to the borrower situation, which helps lenders gain more business for well-qualified home buyers. Our online rate finder is super easy to use. All you have to do is fill in the loan details, know your master policy, and off you go. If you need help finding your master policy, always reach out to your local rep, or you can reach out to the Solution Center. The Solution Center email is solutioncenter at nationalmi.com. Thank you, and don't forget to try National MI on your next transaction. So with that, National MI is excited to bring Meme, Myself, and I taking Instagram to the next level as our latest live presentation. I'm proud to introduce Sarah Vita as our key guest speaker in today's presentation. Sarah is the digital strategist for cultural outreach, as well as project manager for consumer education, social media, and assistant editor for Mortgage Women Magazine. She has spoken at a variety of conferences on topics related to millennials, recruiting and retention, and social media. So please listen loudly, and with, with, without further ado, Sarah Vita. Sarah, the floor is yours. Thanks, Tony, and thank you, Karen. Um, that was a really great introduction. I'm very excited to be here today. Um, it sounds like we have a lot of different kinds of users um, in terms of Instagram with us, which is very exciting. So hopefully I'm going to be able to help everybody, no matter where they are um, in their Instagram journey. But um, I'm going to try to cover everything from kind of like the basics to some more nuanced things to really help you out with your profiles and reaching your community and things like that. Um, I just do want to start by saying if you're new to Instagram and it seems like a scary thing, uh, I think the thing to do is just to like get on and start posting and just kind of play around with it because it's better to have, um, you know, some activity than just kind of like you post every once a month or something like that. Um, so it can be really basic. I'm going to get into some kind of um, more detailed, advanced ideas and concepts. But at the end of the day, you're posting content, um, photos and things like that that people are going to see. So before we get into the meat of everything, I'm going to go through a couple of housekeeping things. So um, first, I want to talk about our YouTube page. Check it out, um, youtube.com slash cultural outreach. We have a lot of great information on there from um, industry interviews um, to different, different topics, things like that. So I urge you to check that out for more content if you like what you see today. We also have an Instagram. Uh, Cultural outreach. So what we're doing, we post about all the places we are. We are in kind of an international company at this point. So we're always on different adventures, talking at different events, um, doing cool things with the community. So check that out and uh, talk to us on Instagram. We love to talk to our followers. And of course, thank you so much to National MI for having us and partnering with us to bring you guys this great content. Um, if you haven't already, definitely check out discoverm3.com. Karen kind of went through it a little bit, but it is basically the millennial multicultural media hub for all things that we talk about that we've partnered with National MI to bring you. There's some really cool things on there like handouts, some worksheets, all of our webinars, some very cool videos. Um, Anything that you want to kind of use to keep you up to date on trends and things like that in marketing with multiculturals and millennials. So it's very cool. It's kind of new. Definitely check that out. We have a newsletter, which you can subscribe to on M3, discoverm3.com. That kind of gives you a little overview of what we're doing that month with National MI. Some really cool articles, interviews with industry people, um, and of course, things to share and um, interactive worksheets and things like that. 
so you can subscribe on the M3 website. Um, a little sample of what we've got going on this month. We have an interview with David Hrobon, who is the president of Wintrust Mortgage. Um, we recently partnered with him and got to meet him at a couple of different events with the MBA, and he's a really great CEO and leader. Um, he's a big advocate for women and women's empowerment, so I think you'll really like the interview that we have with him. Um, he talks about a lot of great things that Wintrust Mortgage is doing. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, today, we're going to talk about the different kinds of things that make an Instagram profile stand out. So what can you do to kind of make it pop, um, make it a little bit more unique or interesting um, to your community. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about storytelling and what that means with your brand and your story and your business and how you can really convey um, you know, the story within, within the professional journey that you're taking. And then finally, we're gonna talk about partnership building and influencer marketing. This is a sort of newer topic maybe for some of you, but it's a really great way to get involved with the community and utilize your community members and your followers and clients to help you build a better profile. So let's start with meme culture. The name of this, in, of this webinar is Meme Myself and I, so I thought it would be fun to kind of talk about memes. This is just kind of a fun little thing that Kristen and I put together that we thought was funny. Um, but a meme, if you guys don't know, is all the rage on the internet but it's something that is basically an image or an idea that is spread virally throughout, um, often amongst millennials, that kind of um, conveys a sort of phenomenon. I'm going to give you guys some examples, so don't worry. But that's, that's a meme. It's an internet thing. An internet meme is a subset of memes, like I just said, specific to the culture and environment of the internet. Um, here's an example. This is Kristen. She picked this one out. Um, but basically, you see this picture of the dog, and then you connect it to kind of um, an idea or a sentence or something that's in more personal. And they're usually pretty funny, and everyone can kind of relate to them. I also did a little bit of a rabbit hole situation where I searched for mortgage memes, and it was a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be. So I urge you to check those out. Here's more. This is, um, these are just, Really, it's you could go on and on forever, kind of like finding these on the internet, but they're really funny, um, and they're you know kind of like a fun way to bring a little bit of light and comedy into your um, everyday internet life. Um, but what does this what does this matter to you guys? So it's just kind of a fun way to understand what's going on on the internet in the environment that the Instagram is kind of living. Um, so this is something that people people follow like meme accounts and things like that, um, that they're solely dedicated to this sort of like comic content. So this is what the kids are looking at, they're what they're creating, things like that. Um, so it's just good to kind of be aware. And also, it is something that you can do and post on your own page if you feel like it's appropriate and kind of goes with the flow of what you're talking about, but be sure to like, you know, really limit, um, limit those. You don't want it to become overwhelming. So, Memes, now that that's done, let's get started with um, Instagram, Instagram and business. So right now, Instagram is doing a lot better um, in terms of engagement than Facebook. Facebook is still the number one social platform all across the board, but in terms of people kind of getting engaged with each other, commenting on each other's posts, asking questions, starting really interesting discussions, Instagram is doing better and better each year. So Facebook is putting a lot more money and generating um, energy into Instagram ads. So it's just good to know that and think about, you know, it's good to have Facebook, but it's also, um, it would be good to think about transitioning and kind of adopting Instagram as well if you haven't already, because it is becoming more and more popular. Um, it's becoming the place that people go to look for businesses, um, to do re read reviews, to kind of see what other people are doing. It's a lot more live and present, and there's an Instagram account for pretty much every business these days, so it's a really easy way to promote yourself and get engaged with the community. Um, this is the demographics of the Instagram users. A lot of them are millennials, but it really does run the gamut, so there are people of all ages using Instagram. So you don't have to think that it's just 
going to be a place where you're only going to reach, you know, a certain demographic. It really um, is a good place to be if you want to reach, you know, the baby boomers, millennials, the Gen Zers, they're the newest generation that we have a whole other webinar on just them. So, um, and I mentioned this before, most of the popular brands have, have an Instagram, they're posting all the time. So this is just to kind of get a, get an idea of what popular and successful brands are doing on Instagram. You might want to check out some of your favorite brands and see what kind of things they're posting, um, how often they're utilizing Instagram stories. Um, but just know that they post often, which is kind of, I think the key, if you want to be successful on Instagram, if there is one thing that I would really stress, it would be to be consistent. Um, even if you, don't know what to post, you know, try to make a schedule and think about what it is that you are bringing to the industry. How are you a leader? Um, how are you going to help people on their journey, whatever that may be, and find ways to tell that story and post often, even if it's just, you know, these brands are posting 1.5 times a day, which is a lot. We don't really even do that. But um, if you can post one to three times a week, that's great. And then you're going to start to see that there's a presence and there's a community there that you're reaching. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some Instagram pages that work. We tried to pick some um, real estate and mortgage industry based profiles so that it would, you know, be relatable. But these are just some kind of conceptual profiles that we think are really effective. And obviously this is going to be people that have been doing this for a long time and have marketing teams specifically dedicated to creating their Instagram profiles, but it's still a really good example of what um, people are doing and what you can strive to do yourself. So the first sort of theme of an Instagram profile that I think is really great is a design based. So this Instagram profile is called the Real Houses of IG. IG is the um, abbreviated Instagram. So you can see up there that this is gonna be houses that are found on Instagram. It's basically just like a collection of different people's homes um, across, across the board um, and you can submit to them. And this is all about the visuals. You know, this isn't necessarily a service that's going to help you with interior design. It's more of um, like a, um, a catalog of what people are doing with their homes. So it appeals to people who are looking um, for a nice aesthetic. Maybe it's a good like design um, inspiration for someone who's redoing their own home. But this is a design based profile. They focus specifically on like beautiful images, beautiful photographs. And it does that really well because it's not really trying to do anything else. So your profile not be not might sorry, might not be design based, but it's good to think about like picking something and kind of honing in on what you want your profile to represent. Um, next, we have educational. So this is Brenda um, Mako Realtor. Um, and she is obviously a real estate agent. And you can see right there in her profile, she puts that she's a realtor, um, how long she's been working, and she tells you where she's working. You can see the hashtag Orlando, Florida, hashtag Lake Nona, hashtag buyer, sellers, um, wife and mom. So this is such a good example because she kind of lays it all out there. You go to her profile and you see exactly who she is, where she is, and what she does. So this is something that you could totally do. Um, when you're creating your profile, it allows you to add in whatever information that you want to you know, say to the world. But this is like the first impression. Someone's going to go to your profile and they'll see this. Um, and they know that they can go to your profile and see what sort of homes that you have um, in your docket right now or whatever your business is. Um, and then I like the personal aspect of wife and mom because people want to see a human, you know, they want to know that you have a life and you have a personality and um, they don't want to just see all business. But at the same time, her profile is very professional looking. You can see the nice photos. She used some like cool graphics. Um, and then she also uses hashtags. So this is something that I kind of talk about later. Um, but hashtags are a way that people can find you if they don't know you directly because you can actually search hashtags. So in this case of Brenda, I would maybe search hashtag real estate and hashtag Lake Nona if I was living there and her profile might come up because she's basically identified herself under those parameters. Um, 
And so going back to kind of what her profile is in terms of educational tips and tricks, um, she is posting a lot of um, helpful information about the industry, about buying a home, about selling a home. She's probably posting a lot about home buyer education and financial literacy. So this is a resource and this is a really great tool for her community. People know that they can come to her profile and learn things and ask her questions. Um, so this is something that I would urge you to think about as well. And then the last one is humorous memes. So this is kind of what I was talking about before. Um, and this is actually a real, a real estate specific uh, profile, but this is someone who's basically dedicated their account to many things on the internet. So this is Laughing Realtor. So they've basically posted everything you can see here that is funny that's related to real estate. And these are just fun. Like it's fun to follow these because you might be having a, you know, a hard day and then you, you can scroll through here and like get some laughs and maybe it's inspirational. A lot of times these people who have um, these kinds of accounts also have professional accounts. Um, so this probably isn't going to be the kind of account that you have, but it is just another good example of a very concentrated, um, a uh, very strong profile type. And four is personal brand. So this showcases your expertise and your um, industry leadership. And it's a mix of both the professional and the personable. And we think this is kind of the most marketable because a lot of people don't want to necessarily create a personal profile and a business profile because that's just too much work. Totally get it. Um, so this is a way that you can kind of combine both and it's very doable because you can be kind of posting what you're doing in your day-to-day, -day, even if you're just going to the gym or if you're going to pick up your kids from soccer or something, that is showing people your life and your unique personality and that, again, that you're a human, but then you wanna like, you know, speckle your content with helpful tips. Um, if you're at some sort of event and you're speaking at the event or you're learning something new, um, it's, it's a really great way to help people in the community and engage with people in the community, but also show them that um, the other side of your, you know, like real life. And this person, if you can see the little the circles that are underneath her profile, they say things like events and Team VC and Realtor and stuff like that. Those are highlights that you can make um, that allow you to kind of categorize videos so that if people want to know, they want to learn about your events, they can watch all the videos that you have on events and just go straight there and it makes for a very um, direct and easy to find um, profile. Here's another, a couple of other examples and you can totally you know, write these down and check them out yourself so you can read through the whole profile and kind of play around. But we have Invent Adventures in Real Estate, um, YYC, that's Sarah Johnston, she's a realtor. And see she writes in there, slightly sarcastic realtor. So this is fun because she's a realtor but she already gave herself an edge by kind of infusing her profile with a little bit of personality. And you can see that she uses kind of like the same color. She uses that turquoise color throughout. So that's a really good way of um, enhancing your professional profile with that design element that I talked about earlier, because it doesn't have to be one or the other, but it is cool to kind of pick an aesthetic that you like and build your profile around that because it's just gonna look really clean. And then we have Dusty J. Baker. And he is a realtor as well. Um, you can see that he is Christian. He lives in Montecito, California, and he does international realty. Top 40 under 40. Um, he, you got a lot of information right there, just in like three sentences. And he puts his website, which is really great. So when this is over, go check these out. Um, see what they have on their profiles and see if you can kind of like pick up some of the elements that they're using that are that are really making their profile unique. Because again, these are all different people, but they all have super different um, like purposes. You know, I can look at Adventures in Real Estate, YYC, Sarah Johnston's on the left and see that I'm gonna probably see some funny content in there as well as helpful content. Um, so just think about that when you're creating your profile. Do you wanna be a funny realtor? Do you wanna be a silly realtor? Do you wanna be the serious realtor? Do you wanna be the super helpful? Think of a way that you can make your profile unique and different and um, stand out. So, and again, so Sarah, um, if you have a second, we have a, a few questions. Oh yeah, look, this is a good time to break the questions. Um, and I did okay. just want to say, 
those are not obviously the only four types of profiles. Those are just kind of the way that we've categorized them. That's not a hard and fast rule that Instagram has or anything like that. So what are, okay. what do we have? Questions? So um, Joshua says, can you repeat what you said about how often to point, um, post to Instagram? Sure. So there's really no hard and fast rule, you know, um, but we think that it's kind of best depends on where you're at now. Like if you're just starting out on Instagram, I would say maybe three times a week. Um, when you get more and more engagement, a lot of people are posting daily, but maybe even two times a week um, and maybe pick the days that you're going to post. So if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then you'll start to develop a schedule and people will start to know, oh yeah, Sarah, every morning she posts a tip about um, where to look for homes online. And then people are going to always like be there and be ready to know, um, be expecting your, your content. Does that help? Yep, absolutely. And Diane says, how do you add a hashtag to your profile? Sure. So if you go to your profile, I wish I could show you my phone, but it's not going to be very helpful. Um, I will actually take some screenshots of this when we're done and send them to everyone. But if you go, I'm going to go onto my Instagram right now. Basically, if you click on your profile um, and you go to settings, there's a little like gear. You can, it'll scroll over and then it'll say edit profile. And then when you click on that, you can write whatever you want. I believe there's a character limit, um, but that's where you write your bio. So I would say like Sarah Vita, you know, world traveler, digital strategist for cultural outreach, hashtag animal lover, because that's, I'm an animal lover. Um, but that's essentially how you do it. When you're, when you're editing your profile, you just type in the, the pound sign, and then it's going to populate itself as a hashtag in your profile. Cool. And are the hashtags only relevant on Instagram? He often posts Instagram and have it post to Facebook at the same time. Just curious. Mm -hmm. No, that's a really great question. Um, and they are across the board useful. I think they're a little bit more um, ex accessed on Instagram probably, but you can include hashtags on Facebook and use them the same way. And um, hashtags are also becoming really big on LinkedIn. So I would definitely encourage you to think about that when you're posting on LinkedIn as well. When we post um, articles, we'll often post like hashtag marketing to millennials or Something like that. So hashtags can be used on pretty much the platform now. Well, we have a lot of questions flying in, so I'm going to go ahead and let you keep going so we stay on track here. And then at the end, if we have time, and then I know you also do a video follow-up in case we can't get to all of them. So I'll mm -hmm. turn the floor back over to you, Sarah. Definitely. Thanks, Karen. And don't worry, like Karen said, we always do a little kind of like top questions at the end, and we'll, we'll get to everybody at some point. Um, so this is just a really cool quote from Tom Peters about um, branding because a lot of people, especially now in 2019, um, the most important part of branding, I think, is, is the why and the you. Um, people want to see a, a person behind, behind the brand because that comes down to being trust, trustworthy. You know, if they see that you're a real person, that you're really doing the things that you say, that you're engaged with your community, that you're passionate about what you're doing, people are gonna trust you more and then they're going to wanna work with you. So it's as simple as that. Just trying to think about being authentic, you know, um, how, you, how would you talk? How would you, how would you explain something? Don't worry too much about it being completely perfect or by the book because people can find that on the internet anywhere. So just be yourself. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna talk about standout profiles and what you can do to make yours very unique and um, authentically you. So I kind of talked about this a little bit, but you want to have an easy to, prof easy to find profile name. Um, so again, here's some examples of some profiles that I showed you earlier, but you want to make it simple. You don't want to make it too confusing and hard to read. Um, make it your name. That's super easy. And then if you want to, you can make it your name and then use an underscore and put what you are, what you do, because that is going to just be the most straightforward. You don't want, to you don't want people to be confused when they're going to your Instagram and not know what it is that you do. So, and if your name is not available, if you have a common name, I don't even have that common of a name, but my name was taken. Um, just add something. That's why you can add 
what it is that you do, where you're located. Um, there's a lot of ways to make it, you know, personal without changing it completely. Okay, and then personal hashtag, we talked about this a little bit, um, but you can put hashtags in your profile, and then you also wanna put them in each of your posts. So say you're at an um, open house or something like that, you can post a picture or a video of you at the open house, and then add a couple of hashtags that are relevant. So always, we encourage clients to um, create kind of like a brand hashtag that you use over and over and over. So if you are a real estate agent and your name is Nancy and you say like um, real estate by Nancy, that can be your hashtag. Or there's one right here, loans by Sarah B. I don't do loans, but if I did, that would be my loan originator hashtag. And then you use that like on every single post and then people will be able to find all of your stuff that way. But then you wanna add, you can add multiple hashtags by the way on every post. Um, I think there's a limit, but usually we recommend not doing more than like 10 because then it gets really busy looking and they kind of aren't as effective if they're like super generic. But once again, say you're at a, um, a open house and you say like open house in downtown LA or DTLA open house, that really like narrows it down to where you are and what it is you're doing. So if I was someone who's trying to find a home in downtown LA, that's where I live, um, and I was looking for an open house, I would probably search the hashtag DTLA open house, and then I would see all the posts that people have tagged their posts with that hashtag, if that makes sense. And it just makes it really easy for people to find you. Um, so think about really um, specific descriptions of what it is that you're talking about. Because you can use um, generic hashtags, like hashtag real estate, but it's probably gonna get lost in the sea of real estate hashtags. So try to make it personal, but also something that people would most likely search for. Um, and this, again, this isn't like the super overnight quick trick to getting a million followers. Um, but what you really want, you don't want a million followers, you want people to be engaging with you, right? So if you are making your profile accessible to the general population um, of the audience that you're targeting, then they'll find you and then they'll start talking with you and asking you questions. And that is really the goal. Um, so again, being clear about what you, who you are and what you do. I talked about this with the earlier profiles that we looked at, but people need to know what it is that you do. I won't spend too much time here, um, but this is a really good slide to look at. Um, and just, just make it direct, make it succinct, and make it interesting. You know, put that little hook in there so that people can be like, oh, I'm going to remember that person. I'm going to check them out later. Um, and you can include links as this girl did, Sarah, she has her Google page and you can put your email, you can put a whole bunch of stuff in there so that people can find you. Because the goal is we want people to reach out to you, right? Um, clean and professional looking. So no matter what it is that you are doing, if you don't have a super nice camera or a production team, which most of us don't, um, smartphones these days are so great, the technology is amazing, you can really make create a lot of great quality content very easily. So just think about that when you're posting something. You know, if you're taking a picture of something and there's like a bunch of clutter, clear out the space, take the photo again. If you're taking a selfie and there's a bunch of weird stuff behind you, just think about your environment because um, you, can, you can go from like super amateur to super professional looking just by being mindful of your environment and the kind of photos that you're taking. Again, you don't have to be a professional photographer, but anybody can these days with our smartphones. Um, and I talked about uh, consistency, so posting three times a week, and then posting stories. I haven't really talked about this yet, but if you don't know what that is, it is a live video feed that's on the Instagram profile that allows you to see um, someone's video that they've taken for 24 hours, and then it goes away. So if you look on Instagram, there's like a rainbow circle around someone's profile photo, and that means that they have a live story. And you can take these very easily if you click on your profile picture and then click the little plus, and that opens your camera. And um, posting stories daily is a lot easier than posting, um, it's not the same thing as like posting content during the week. The content that you post on your newsfeed, which is what you see here, that's the stuff that's gonna be like, 
you know, nicer photos, um, well thought out kind of staged content where you're, you're really putting thought and effort into the flow. But live stories are a really cool way for you to be authentic and for you to connect with your users in a real way. So if you are going to an event, that's a good time for you to maybe whip out your camera, maybe you're with someone that you know, and you can say like, hey, this, you know, I'm holding up my camera, hey, this is Sarah, I'm here with whoever at the mortgage conference in Louisiana. Um, we're really excited to share what we're, what we're gonna learn with you, what we're gonna learn today with you. So stories are something that you post that are super short and quick, um, and just kind of like a little, like it's like a window into your day to day. And that's what, that's the purpose of those things. So try to look into that um, and see if you can play around with it. It's really fun. It's a really easy way to engage with people. Um, and then high engagement with your followers. So this is where you don't want to just like post stuff and then, you know, put your phone down and, and walk away. You want to, the way that you're going to um, create more followers and create a community is by engaging with your network. Um, people are gonna comment on your photos and say like, hey, this is really cool. What were you doing? Can you tell me more? And then you wanna respond kind of as quickly as possible. You don't need to be like slave to your phone or anything, but if someone's commenting on your stuff, make sure to take the time and go through all of your, your social media platforms and, and respond to people, message them back, like their stuff um, because the algorithms within Instagram kind of work off of this engagement, um, you know, logarithm. So the more engaged your profile, your profile is, or that you're engaging with other people, it's going to like populate more um, within Instagram, Instagram world. So um, definitely be doing that. Instagram stories. So this is what I was talking about with the kind of live feed. And here's a, a nice screenshot of what your, your, your phone's gonna look like. Um, but these are like 15 seconds max. These are not long, these are not YouTube videos. They're not like super professional. They're supposed to be very casual, obviously professional, but it's more expected to be casual. Um, the kind of general audience for these are the millennials and the Gen Zers because they are the ones that are using this the most but it's a really good way to connect with them as well. If you're posting on your Instagram stories, people are gonna watch them because people don't have the attention span they used to. So it's really great for people to kind of quickly go through and watch these little short videos. And then maybe that's gonna hook them and have them come check out your page. Um, active posting on stories. Here's some really good examples of what you can post on your Instagram story if you're not really sure what that would be. Um, maybe you can do a tip of the day if you had a really great moment with a client or something like that, you could talk about it. Um, and then something like your daily routine. This is from my Instagram story. Um, our CEO, Kristen, was working in Puerto Rico this last week um, doing a disaster relief um, project with a, a partner that we have. And she was working from the rainforest. So she posted from her phone an Instagram story of her view and then just put a real quick little description and then she added a hashtag digital nomad. So this is a really good example of kind of all of the things that I've talked about so far and how it um, it, it can be super easy because she was just sitting at her computer and just like boop, snapped it. And it's, you know, a really cool look at what our company means, our, our kind of uh, work culture, what we're doing. And it's fun. People are like, oh, you're in the rainforest. So cool. Um, so that's Instagram stories. And if anyone has any questions about this, I can address them a little bit later. Um, here's a really specific how to do this. I'm not going to go through this necessarily right now, but if you want to read this later, um, this is like a, a seriously step-by-step -step how to post on Instagram stories. And again, this is Instagram stories, which is different than just like your Instagram feed. The Instagram feed are the little square boxes that you see that contain photos or graphics or things like that. Stories are purely um, the effervescent 24-hour material. Um, and then these are the story highlights. I kind of mentioned them earlier when we were looking at someone else's profile, but you can categorize your stories. And this is where you can actually save them. If you wanted to save them longer than 24 hours, you can put them in your highlight um, box right there or your highlight, call, highlight row. And then people can go back and look at your short videos on these topics. Um, and, let, and it kind of provides another cool like resource that you have for your community. Instagram TV, um, so this is 
the other new feature that's relatively new to Instagram. But this is so cool. Um, it's kind of Instagram's way of turning into um, all, all in-house like YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, it's everything. So Instagram TV is a longer form video. Um, these videos are 15 seconds to 10 minutes. Um, and this is where you want to be a little bit more professional and staged and have like a higher production quality um, production of, of these kinds of content. And this would be something where um, maybe you're going to be doing an interview or you want to do a longer form video on, um, you know, like teaching, teaching clients about mortgage insurance or something like that. But um, this can be found. It's actually a different app that you have to download, but then it populates onto your Instagram profile. Um, and here's some examples of Instagram TV channels. So essentially when you have Instagram TV, you have your own channel. Um, and here's again, some examples of things that you would do on here that are different than your Instagram stories. So maybe you have a blog, um, maybe you kind of have, you have a podcast that you can then upload to Instagram TV. This is a great place for educational content. Like I talked about and talking about product or service launches. So maybe you have a new website that you wanna talk about. Um, this is a good place to kind of do that. And then this is permanent versus the stories, which is um, 24 hours. And Instagram Live, this, there's just so many options on Instagram. So this is the live broadcast that is kind of like the breaking news sort of thing. It's very similar to Facebook Live. Um, you can go up to an hour, but we suggest not doing more than 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So this is like if you're at a cool event and you want to be sort of broadcasting the more of a longer form of something. Um, so example, we have the Kavanaugh hearings, the iPhone reveal. Um, it's cool, like in the moment, very exciting stuff. And it's also a really good way to, um, engage because with Instagram live, as you can see here, people can comment on what you're doing and you can actually talk to users directly during that time. So it's a really good way to engage with people. Um, and you can, you know, have like guest speakers in there, you, you know, your Instagram live is promoting a new partnership or something like that. And it's, it can be a good way for you to set aside some time to do some Q and a, um, which is a really great way to extend your net, extend your reach and build your community. So before I get into the next section, do we have any more um, questions? We have a ton, <laughs> but um, four or five of them are, are very similar and, and okay. people want to know personal account and incorporate business information, do a separate business account and incorporate some personal information or keep them two separate. You know, that's really um, the question of preference. We get that a lot. I think it depends on how much energy you want to put into, into something. I think if you have a personal profile that you know you want to keep personal, that you might put stuff on there that you don't want your clients to see, or that you just really, maybe you have pictures of your family that you don't want to share or whatever, then keep your personal profile personal. And you can also make it private so that it's locked. Um, but if you do, and then if you do that and have a, a professional brand, I would still infuse it a little bit with some personal elements just to make it a little bit less robotic, but having two separate accounts is totally fine. I think we find that the most marketable accounts are kind of the, the fusion ones because it sort of happens naturally that you're going to, um, infuse some of your personal into the mixed account. If that's the only one that you have, as long as as you keep it professional just remember if you're choosing kind of a hybrid make sure that you don't put anything on there that you wouldn't want any clients to see any new leads any business partner that but it's definitely possible um and then if you do have a, a professional or an hybrid account don't make it locked because people aren't going to be able to find you and the minute that they see that you have a private profile they're going to move on um so that's a big one and um yeah I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think so. Candino wanted to know if you have to give credit to where your memes come from. Hmm. That's a good question. I think you should, um, unless you're creating the meme yourself, which is totally something people do. It's really easy to kind of tag where you got it from. So whenever we share things like that, we always say, you know, picture from whoever. And then also if you're doing that, it's a way to 
um, engage with people because it's always better to be tagging other accounts and referencing other people because someone who looks at the account where you may have got your meme from, they'll see that you tagged their post in your post and they're gonna get more um, eyes on your content. So I would say always, always reference and credit where you get your information from. Jeannie wants to know if she should put her name after each hashtag, like Rena Loans by Me or Loans by Me or VA Loans by Me. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um, I think you shouldn't do it for every single hashtag, but if you want to create like one or two like brand hashtags, kind of like what I mentioned earlier, Loans by Sarah V, then it creates sort of this like longevity and this you're gonna build a body of work that all relate to that one hashtag. But then um, you wanna use some other ones that are maybe more like geographically related. Um, but I would definitely say, urge you to add your name or your initials or something, but just make sure you're consistent. Like don't change it every time. And maybe one day I put hashtag loans by Sarah and another day I put hashtag loans by Sarah V. That's not going to be as consistent and people won't like learn that that's your hashtag. If you're trying to build like a repetition and build a brand when people see your content, they'll go, oh yeah, that's the loans by Sarah or whatever. Um, so in answer to your question, yes, use your name, but be consistent and then maybe just do it to the two or three that are kind of like the main product or service. So Kitty wants to know how to add photos to my Instagram story highlights without mm -hmm. posting them on my story page? Um, you sort of have to, they have to come from your story um, originally because that's kind of the, the whole thing of the highlights is that it's showcasing your story. But the kind of hack around that is if you post it on your story, you can add it to highlights. Um, which is an option in the like, there's like three little dots at the bottom of your Instagram story and then you can say add to highlight. And then once it's in your highlight, you can go back and then delete it from your story. So it can be up for maybe like a minute and then you can go down. But there isn't any way to add it directly to your highlights without it going to your story first. Hopefully that helps. Do you want to keep going and then um, see what time we have? <laughs> Yeah, I know. Oh my gosh, it's already 1242. Woo! So much stuff. Okay. <laughs> so, story, so we have two more sections, storytelling your brand and in partner influencing. So with that in mind, I'll make sure I, I keep it kind of short. There's just so much to talk about and I hate sort of glossing over things. So let's, let's get into it. What is your story? I already talked about this a little bit, so I'm going to kind of keep going, but be authentic. People want to know who you are. Um, keep that in mind when you're when you're writing your copy. What's your voice? What's your eye? Um, choose a theme. What do you want to do? So this kind of goes along with your profile, but think about what your goal is with social media. Are you trying to teach people something? Are you um, a leader in the community? Are you an entrepreneur? And just kind of like even writing this down always helps me. It, it helps you sort of visualize what it is that you're trying to make and create for yourself. Because if you kind of go into it with um, a little, you're all over the place, and you're like, well, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's probably not gonna be as effective. So it's not every single post is gonna be related to your theme. So just try to pick one and think about that and keep it in the back of your mind when you're creating your content. Um, again, what are your goals with your, with your profile? We kind of already talked about this, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, how are you impacting the community? So this is an element of social media that is really helpful when you're trying to engage with the community, you're trying to get more followers. Um, it's all about engagement. It's all about who are you talking to? How are you responding to clients, to consumers and users? And how are you talking to them online? That's where the, you know, the power is going to happen. But if this is part of like the you story, if you are, supporting a bigger cause, then you should definitely be talking about it. If you're really into, um, you know, financial literacy, then make that like part of your profile or whatever it is that you are, that you are into. And um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit later in terms of like finding partners, but keep, that's like one of your, one of your themes that you wanna, you wanna keep consistent. 
Um, what is your day-to-day -day like? I'm just going to go through that. What are your customer success stories? So this is a good example of if you are getting stuck on content creation and you don't know what to post, always, always, always um, include your, your clients because if, pe if your people that you've worked with are successful, that means that you helped them on that journey and other people can, can use your help too. So it's always really great to make your profile not always just about you, but like who have I helped in the past and how are they doing now? Um, first time home buyers, repeat buyers, whether it's career relocation, these are all super great examples of people that you might have worked with and have amazing stories that other people can really easily relate to. Um, and again, this kind of builds trust and lets people know that you are engaged in your community, are active in your community, and people look to you as a guided and trusted advisor through this process of buying a home. Um, Q&A or FAQs. So I talked about this a little bit with the like Instagram Live. But think about hosting, maybe like every Friday afternoon, you're gonna say, it's Friday afternoons with Sarah, I'm gonna do a live Q&A on Instagram, like make sure to check in with me at 2 p.m. And then it might start out really slow, you might have like two people, but it's a good way to sort of build a consistent um, ritual with your network and that people know that they can come to you and ask you whatever they want about the industry or about your business or about your services and things like that, but this is a good practice to get into. What are your colleague stories? This is similar to the customer and client success stories. I won't spend too much time here, but again, it's about it's about showing people that you care about, you know, it beyond the self. And if you have a team behind you that's really helpful and really great, highlight them, you know, show them what the work that goes on behind the scenes. People always want to see that and know that um, there's more than just, just you know, what they think they see on Instagram and things like that. Um, collaborating and support. So I kind of mentioned this with the meme question, but we always tag everyone that we're with or the places that we are. Um, this is a good way to build not only um, relationships with that person, but with people who follow them. So this was from our interview with David from Wintress Mortgage. And this was at the MBA Diversity and Inclusion Summit. So you can see here, we've kind of covered all the bases, and this is a good sort of template for what you should do. You can see underneath our profile name that we have the location. So you wanna always tag where you are, and then we describe who we're talking to, and we, he doesn't have an Instagram himself, but their mortgage company does. So we tagged Wintrust Mortgage. And then below, we um, hashtagged some appropriate things, and it actually, goes down farther, but you can't say everything, but we have women in the workplace, gender pay gap, those are the things that we talked about with David. Um, so this is a good example of all of the ways that you can expand your reach with just one post. Finally, oh my gosh, we're gonna do it maybe. Partnership building and influencer marketing, I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly, but a lot of people hear the word influencer and they think of like Kylie Jenner or something, and that's not exactly what we're going for, but um, it's the same kind of idea where you can utilize people of your community and um, people that you look up to to help build your brand and that's going to be a good way for you to build, you know, get more followers and generate leads and also just build new relationships, which is the basis of, of good business, right? So think about um, what you need in your profile. What are you missing? What do you want to do? Are you interested in, like I talked about earlier, financial literacy? Maybe that's your theme. So think about organizations or people in your community that also follow these, these same or advocates for this cause. And then reach out, you know, make that connection, start talking to them and see how you can work together. Um, right here, I'm just going over quickly, what are you lacking and thinking about things that you might be missing from your profile and then how you can utilize partners to um, fill in the gaps. So if you are not a great photographer or you don't feel like you're creative, you can look for photographers in your community and find ways that you can kind of do like a partnership where if they take photos of you at an event, you'll tag them and vice versa. And it's a really good way to um, build, the, build your community and your network and also get more interesting content in your, um, in your profile. 
Um, and this is a, more about the audience needs guiding your content. So think about what it is people ask you, um, what questions they ask you, what sort of things you hear people talking about a lot. Do they want more financial literacy information? Do they want to know about credit scores? Um, these are the people that you're engaging with, so let them guide the kind of content that you're building. Um, I've talked about this a couple of different times, but these are ideas for posts that you can make, educational tips. Um, it's a great platform, I've talked about that a lot. Um, and it's a good way for referring new business because a lot of people, you know, back to the consumer, consumer posts, if your client has a great experience with you and they post a picture of them with you at the closing and they're like, hey, you know, Sarah was so great on this, on this journey with me, I would recommend her to anyone who's looking to buy a home. And then, you know, that's gonna be a great advertisement for you. And then you post that in your profile as well. So at the end of every, every business transaction, if it was a good one, I would recommend trying to get a video or a photo or a quote or something like that that you can include on your profile. That's gonna be such a great way. It's like an easy, easy content idea and it's going to build that trust with your community. Um, so this is kind of more what I was talking about with the referral, with sorry, with the influencer partner, but someone who's working in the same cause as you are. Um, so this is less about you know like clients and success stories, but more about your why and your you story. Um, so if you're looking for someone who's like an industry leader or someone who is involved in an organization that you like. You want to look for a, what, they, what they're what they calling micro-influencers. So these are people with less than 100,000 followers. They're a lot more accessible. They're a lot generally more engaged with their own um, network. And um, they're a lot, you know, it's going to be a lot more authentic than someone who's maybe getting paid to post for a brand or something like that. So when you're looking for people like that, you can use the hashtags that we've talked about. Um, look for people in your area, look for organizations that you like and pe how people are engaging with them. And maybe you'll find, you'll start a conversation with someone on Instagram and that'll lead to a partnership. Um, let's see, it's 1252. So I might skip the building a campaign together part um, because this is sort of once you've um, you know, identified someone who you wanna work with in terms of influencer partnerships and I can maybe I can uh, record a separate video on this if people want to hear about it or go through it a little bit more in depth um, because I think this was the last part. Oh, this is one more thing about like some cool apps. This is not super long. So maybe I'll go through this and then we'll open it up for questions. So um, these are some really cool apps that we use a lot if you need help with creating cooler content or editing your photos because as we know, you know, not everything is just perfect from, you know, when you snap it on your phone. So check out some of these and they can help you build beautiful things. This one is called Unfold. And this one is about um, layouts and templates. So if you need help kind of like making collages or if you have a couple different things that you want to include in a post, this can help you build really clean layouts. Snapseed is one that we use for photo editing. It's really cool. You can do so many different things um, and it's really intuitive and easy to use. And this is just kind of like an extension of a filter, but you know, if you have a dark photo and you wanna lighten it up, you can do it here. And a color story is another similar one that is a little bit more design oriented, but it is a photo editing app and um, it kind of can help you make your, your photos pop. So we kind of did it. We got through most of it. Um, here's a little we had a lot of stuff this time. Um, about what we talked about today, and I definitely want to have time for questions. So we have about, looks like five ish minutes. So if you want to open yeah. it up, I'd be happy to answer people's questions. Yeah, so there's a lot of folks that want you to kind of go back again and go over things, which I know we don't have time for. So um, you, there, we'll make the recording available. And again, um, that should be available on Monday, nationalmi.com and then click on resources and click on millennial resources. I also have it in the answer box and the question page as well. Um, but we've got a great class, thank you. Um, one quick question, how do you post over the picture instead of under it? Is there any trick to that? Post over the picture instead of under it. I'm not sure I understand the question. 
Okay, so I think what they're doing is they may have a picture and maybe they want to put a, um, some words over the top of their picture. Would they do that? Yeah, would they do that before they post their picture? Yeah, so I probably should have included this in our apps, um, you know, ideas, but there's one app that we use on, on my phone. It's called Adobe Spark, and it's one of the Adobe Suite apps, and there's a couple more that I can recommend, but it's a really 